Oh, 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 what? Oh, no way. Oh, man. That's some crazy raise tech. One enemy remaining. Oh, my goodness. This is insane. Oh, it's the little bounce that gets me. So the first thing that I love about Illusion's play here is that he's layering the nade and then satcheling off it with the rocket. And the timing is perfect. By the time he lands, no damage from the nade. Like, perfectly executed, clearly practiced. Now, the cool thing about this rocket is it pushes him to the right. So he's actually wrapping around the building just right. He doesn't bounce into the wall and lands perfectly to take out this chamber. And now the poor unsuspecting Clove here has absolutely no chance. Insane take. And then obviously the follow up and finishing off the jet in this situation. Layering again another nade to force the jet to play in one position. And now you're able to easily path up and clean up the jet in the situation. What an entry. <laughs> so much better and the timing on all of that was just beautiful to watch for this fun i asked wahoochin what game he'd like me to review from his games on sunday he said his sunset was his worst map and he'd appreciate my insight so naturally we're gonna take a look at it give him some advice and also you guys on your rank journeys let's get into it as requested from wahoochin we're gonna be looking over his sunset vod here he's on the climb currently and he's real close to immortal 2 a couple more games will probably get him there in this particular vod we're looking at sunset and the last time we looked at sunset we clearly saw an issue with spacing with the satcheling so in this round i'm curious to see if he's made the correct adjustments and have dopi also look at these vods and give him the advice that he needs so i'm looking forward to looking at this one as he specifically asked for me to review this one so i'm very excited to get into it looks like we have a sova which is going to be perfect we have our sentinel thank god we have a sentinel with cypher pretty much a almost guaranteed must pick on this map i've seen multiple games where i've coached multiple sunsets where they didn't have a cypher and that was a big issue so in this one here we have one flex duelist and two entries so our, our site entry is going to be very very strong and clove will have to be very active with the utility the one problem again as we talked about from the previous comp when we did sunset was there's no flash utility so so it was going to work overtime here to be able to assist wuhujin with the entry but the flash entry is going to be weak so there's going to be no support for getting into section three as we talked about before with his last vod we've had situations where Wuhujin had to deal with uh, section one, two, and three, and he double satcheled into three, but that spaced him away from his teammates. So again, the big factors here is communication of where you're going to go at the beginning of the round and how you need Sova utility to be able to clear out these areas, maybe get a dart in at the same time as the satcheling so that you can pull crossers away. So it's going to be interesting to see how he decides to do his satchel work before we talked about doing one single satchel to be able to space it out. If he had a flash teammate, he could have, for example, Breach or a Sky Bird go in and lead in while he's satcheling and that would help a lot to be able to take that space so let's see if he's made the adequate adjustments and let's take a look and see how he does today Water, assholes. <laughs> getting the team rallied up right away love it setting the vibes early first entry here and that is the chamber which is great for us they don't have a cypher on this side so remember as we said before cypher is a must pick and now that we have the sentinel down we don't have to worry about trips so we have an easy way of moving in now the curious question is is do they put two on b in the first part of the round smokes are already laid out so we could take back lane control if we wanted to let's see how he decides to path in here he is double satcheling and he's going into the smokes onto the market this time so he's not going into the back lane and the dart does go in to support him so he had the option of going back there if he wanted to backside is clear so now we don't really have to do anything we're going to chill we can just chill here for a little bit i would just get out of here at this point nice push okay so now this was great he obviously timed this push in it was perfect with the right clicks all that good stuff this is an aggressive way of playing this what was the passive way of playing it 5v4 situation we didn't really have to do much more of anything we could have just spread towards a main or sorry b main in the situation and just chilled onto the bomb sites considering the fact that they don't have uh, a fifth player here they would have to funnel in through all of these entrance ways and that would have been perfectly fine for us to deal with so this was an aggressive play if he's going to do this in the future, I would love to see him pile up with someone. I'm going to push through market. This could be a communication that you give. One of the things that he's reacting off of this situation, and the reason why he is 
uh, attuned with pushing here is the fact that Cypher is making his presence known towards mid. So with the Cypher being in there, there's a bit of a distraction, so he yeah. takes the timing Sorry. here. There's one in market right now. Okay, so why did he do this aggressive push? If we look towards the minimap, we can see that the Cypher is starting to get a line on market. So this is going to serve as a distraction. So everything is based on timing and minuscule timing in this high level. The difference between making a frag or losing a frag is literally mere seconds. So if we see what happens here in a second, Cypher starts taking a fight towards the jet on middle. This is now going to pull attention to anyone who's in market. They're going to have to fall back and be very, very careful because the major threat could be the Cypher flank. Right so because now. of that, Hujin takes, uh, well, Hujin takes a timing where Breach now has to look towards mid because of fear of that push out. And in a 5v4 situation, the likelihood of someone going through this smoke is very, very low. In fact, most of the times, if you want to play textbook, I'd say you never push the smoke in this situation, it's 5v3. So, smartly, Breach is looking towards the right direction, worried about a potential flank. And now Wahujin takes that timing perfectly, hearing him running over to this position, and is able to right-click him. So, this is the example of a gamble play that you could make. There's many ways to skin a cat when it comes to winning a round in Valorant. My recommendation is more the passive route, keep the game as simple as possible, play towards B main and just chill and just win the round from there. But this is totally fine as well. As long as you have the intention behind the decision and you can explain it, I'm totally fine with it. This is good aggression at this point and an easy cleanup following up with the Clove now being in a bad position with two angles being peaked at the same time. So an excellent good pistol round, great start to this game. Vibes are looking really good right now. The decision making is looking really good. He's fresh in this game. Could have caught a timing here, uh, maybe not. On the back site. Came around to the right, dead, good. This is dangerous. Okay, Jet, Jet got lucky in that situation. No more, don't need to peek anymore. So that right there was a little bit of a dangerous peek and obviously Wuhujin was in a position to be able to get out of that, so good enough to know. Um, but in that situation, had he continued to pe uh, fight and peek there, um, long range weapon would have been served for the uh, sheriff in that situation. Push himself up with you. One enemy remaining. Push up. Muscle spawn. There. Doors closed. We're chilling. So he's feeling himself right now. He's going with the more aggro route. This is definitely the uh, Dopi school of of, <laughs> of Valorant, if you will. Uh, she here is being. Uh, baited, but at the same token, Wuhujin saying, I'm going to be with you this whole way through. I'm going to be with you. So the communication here, the action comms is a definite improvement uh, from Wuhujin. Already good vibes from his comms and also great communication for letting him know, I'm going to be with you this whole way. So no we're going to be just fine. Okay, really no need to take this fight. Yeah. Yeah, no water. But if everyone's on the same page, I'm totally fine with that. Leave him thirsty, god damn it. All right, all right, we're gonna fake. This time we're gonna pretend like we're gonna take away their water, but we're actually gonna go right for their fucking families over on A side. <laughs> so while they yeah. while they leave their we'll fucking wives and children at at home to go defend their water because I'm gonna threaten it, you guys are gonna there. murder their fucking wives and children over there on A. All right. <laughs> Jesus. So you. wait for me to yep, wait yep. for me to make them think that I'm coming for their water. Children <laughs> first, guys. Ghost. Children first. All right. So the strat here, as funny as this sounds they're going to be exploding on contact but going slow so we're going to have them uh, reserved and passive in a main while we do the exact same thing we've been doing this entire time for the last two rounds to be able to bait attention so who is going to go in here throw the same kind of utility be as aggressive as possible maybe even satchel and that should create space over from a so we've already conditioned the enemy team to start rotating early because of how aggressive we've been on b so if we keep doing the same thing it should in theory pull the uh, uh rotators from a and the defenders from a so that our a team can start um planting the bomb and being into post plant so let's see how it goes first. i'm advertising it in chat too satchel out Making as much noise as possible. Nades in the back area. This is all normal stuff. The satchel as well. 
So this has all been staged like we're gonna be going into it. So now the fake has already been sold, and at this point, we can start walking up on A. The one factor we need to consider is they might mid push. It's very, very low because low chance of it because they're kind of desperate and they're probably going to play really really clean valorant here they can't lose this round they can't lose guns so it's unlikely that they're going to be pushing tiles unlikely they're going to be pushing mid but we have to be aware of it, it. kill their wives and children looks like it didn't really pull much of a rotation Chamber over hit 55 jet lit 55 i think it's a 212 in the situation yep and revealed so depending on what hujin wants to do it's now a 2v5 situation. If you want to fight, we need to pile our ass right into this position so we can get nice and close to fight this if that's what we're looking for. We don't want to peek this from long range. They're on to Perfect, me. he's moving up. They're on to me. They might have seen him here. And if so, they're, they're both going to double peek here and he's dead. Last player yeah. standing. So there was like a fraction of a second that he ended up getting they're spotted right here, right there by the chamber. So because he's revealed, I'm surprised both of them didn't swing out on that situation, knowing that the last person was towards A. They're on to me. Had he gone a fraction They're of a second me. faster, he could have maybe yeah, caught one of these guys. Okay. And this fight wouldn't have been so damage. awkward. I'm gonna buy a judge, I'm gonna stash yeah. it in the market. Okay, so perfect. Everything that I've been asking for for the last little bit, when the vibes are good, Wuhuchin's clearly doing this and communicating to his team, explaining the exact routing he's going to do. This is so important to get enabled so that everyone's on the same page. Don't change your, your plan, especially when it comes to an entry as a duelist, so that everyone can conform to the plan and be able to assist you properly. The one major factor you're going to notice is how long Wuhuchin can hold his nade for. Now, usually a Silva would shock dart the cypher trips in this comp, so that's totally fine, but in a ranked environment, sometimes you have to nade the trip. In this situation, because we only have a chamber here, we can just satchel right past that trip and it won't be a big a big factor. Um, the trip lines itself usually are quite devastating and have to be dealt with solo um, if you don't have a competent Sova. But because we have that, the trip is broken from the Sova and we're able to hold onto the nade. So big factors here is that we have the comp to be able to counter this, Sometimes you won't have that comp, you won't be able to counter it. So you need to be aware of where you're throwing that nade. Because we can hold onto the nade, we can use it for something completely different. We can hold it, we can nade. Looks like we're gonna be nading Boba here, but we could be holding a nade for a stall if we wanted to, if we wanted to fall back towards B main. We have more options. Always think of your nade as not a frag piece of utility, but a utility that is for zoning, preventing people from going to a certain place for a certain amount of time. Really no need to be fighting here. I want to talk about positioning here. Now, while Hujin goes for this fight, he ends up getting killed um, with a trade, which is fantastic, totally fine. But I'm questioning as to why we did it at all. Now, one of the fundamentals that I teach many of my students is the UFOs. UFOs, which is a protocol that I use to describe if your positioning is good or bad. In this situation where it's a 5v3, there's really no need to be taking any fights right now. So I'm not sure as to why he justifies this particular move, but going through this, we're going to break it down for five steps. You could score yourself out of five. You have util, flash, on, or off angle. You have escape routes, and you have support. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this positioning together and see what he scores out of five and determine if it's a good position or a bad position. It's something you can do with all your own VOD reviews whenever you're looking over your positions to see if it's a fight that's advantageous for you or something that you can even uh, justify as being worth it or not. So util, is there currently anyone with any utility that could support us in the situation? I would say it's pretty hard to see exactly, but right now we do have some people around and there could be Sova darts or drones that could support us. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of a yes, but ultimately, this is a really tough one, so maybe a 0.5, just because he's taking direct fight and direct contact right now, there's really no one who can support him right away. Maybe you can ask for a clove smoke, something along those lines. In this position, obviously as we look at the comp right now, it's impossible to be flashed, but I always want you to consider if you are standing out in the open right now, would you be able to get flashed? And if so, is there any natural cover around for you to dodge said flash? It's not about turning away from the flash, but can you dodge said flash there? I'm gonna give him a check mark here because he can't get flashed considering the comp right now. Is this an on or an off angle? You could argue both right here, but ultimately this would be an on angle. The reason why is because natural crosser placement is gonna fall into this area. So we're gonna give him an escape or we're gonna give him an X for this one. 
the escape routes, looking around for natural cover. If this fight goes wrong, can Wahujin escape? Can he move away from it? Absolutely not. There's no satchels, there's no util that he can use to get out of there, and there's no natural cover. So someone's going to swing out into him and likely take him out, and if so, he cannot leave that situation and survive to live to fight another day. Who can support him on the situation? The support is an interesting one. The support, you've got multiple people who could trade off them, but not necessarily holding a good line to be able to work with this fight right here. So if he does get killed, there's a chance there could be a trade, but it might be delayed. So we're going to give him a 0.5 on this one. So we have two, uh, basically a score of two right now, which is not too, too bad. But consider the fact that you always want to be in the most optimal position possible. And you also need to consider a protocol we talked about in several other VODs is D-I-N-T. Do I need to? In this situation right here, if you're in any kind of ranked environment where you don't have really good cohesion, do I need to is one of the best things you can look at. You look at the top of the scoreboard and you say to yourself, it's a 5v3. Do I need to do this right now? Especially considering that time is on my side and we win our rounds based on time. If you focus on time and thinking about bringing that timer down, you're more often likely to be successful in these rounds. And here's the point I was gonna make. We had a 5v3 situation, and now it's done to a 1v1. How crazy the tables can turn in a round like this. So D-I-N-T, ladies and gentlemen, do I need to? Nice! A nice a uh... Cove, unbind your crouch right fucking now. You can't use it for the rest of the game. I'm sorry, I'm taking away your crouch privileges. <laughs> okay, so here's my opinion on unbinding crouches. I don't like it at all. I don't think you should unbind your crouch at all. The reason why is because you're treating the symptom when you do it, not the cause. What does that mean? The symptom over the cause is basically, I'm going to eliminate something in effect to try to eliminate the habit. The problem is, is that the cause of why someone crouches is usually one of two things, fear or ego. Now, fear, when a person crouches, is when they're caught off guard, when they're not expecting something. So typically that person will drop into crouch in those situations. Ego is when you're trying to correct something. So a lot of times you need to look at where the cause of the issue comes from. And obviously fear and ego can be one of those causes, but it could also be something as simple as positioning. So we get back to this position right here where we see where the clove is in this gunfight. Let's see if we can figure out why this clove decides to crouch. Here's the first thing. Clove is in an angle, if you're to do UFOs, is in an angle that cannot be supported by many people. So definitely not getting traded here. They can't escape in theory. We look at the alt as being a th factor and we'll talk about that in a second, but we can't escape through normal means. Is it an on or an off angle? I would say that this is more of an on angle, so this is a point against it. Why is it an on angle? Because a natural crosshair placement should come to clear this angle after they've cleared the normal spot over on the default. Can they get flashed? Obviously they can't right now because of the lack of flash initiator on the defending team. So they can't get flashed in the situation, but in normal circumstances, they would be able to get flashed in the spot and they wouldn't be able to avoid the flash by any natural means, but in terms of natural cover. And there's no current util that can support the cloven situation. So because of that, naturally a gunfight will feel a little bit stressful. Now we'll talk about the alt. The alt should alleviate all of that stress. I often talk about how phoenixes sometimes when they're in their alt will drop into a crouch randomly. And I sit there saying, why are you afraid in this moment? You're literally immortal. A lot of times people will crouch because of this fear factor or worry of making a mistake. The fact is you are immortal. In this situation as well with club, you technically are immortal and you have two lives. So there's really no need to be crouching, but let's eliminate the alt altogether and pretend we're not playing with the alt. The reason why we crouch here we in this situation yeah, is because of, once again, fear or ego. Yeah, we missed a shot. So in order to correct, we said we'll drop into a crouch to fix the issue. Problem is the issue happened five seconds before when the clove decided to stand in this position. So you always wanna ask yourself, is this a spot that I need to play in? If you can eliminate a lot of the positioning issues, you'll feel more comfy in the spots that you're in. You'll be able to survive more and you won't feel the urge to crouch. So yes, you can unbind crouch and it might help things in the interim, 
But more often than not, students always come back saying, I'm dropping back into that crouch again. What's the problem? It's because of your emotional connection to the moment and why you're crouching. It's either the fear of being caught off guard in a bad position or the ego of being caught off guard slash being in a spot where you're trying to correct. Don't try to correct, position properly, and avoid the problem altogether. Okay, so here's a difference. This Ray Zalt and this Double Satchel works so much better than the previous game that we watched on Sunset. And the reason why is because Wahujit is getting completely enabled here. We have metals being thrown in, smokes being thrown in to be able to limit where these players can be. And obviously with the rocket, the natural response for the breach is to fall back in behind cover. So once you've cleared up the left hand side using everything that you needed, you now have the ability to be able to double satchel in. Here's the one thing that would have I would have preferred to see was a metal nade combo here um, that could either bounce off and land into the cubby first to clear that out fully. And then you rock it in, clearing out this entire section for you so that you're only looking here and you're not really worried about where the positioning is. So right here, we take the shot, we end up getting the kill, good, perfect trade in situation, ends up working. Small little nitpicks here and there to fix things up, but overall, excellent entry right here. All right, let's take a little water. Probably going the same way in the satcheling route here. Going judge again. doesn't end up working out again like I, I just you're begging you're begging for a flash agent in this comp the one thing that we need to look at here is the satchel obviously to market makes complete sense and i'm totally fine with it the problem is is that you also have a jet dashing so you're splitting up your force if we had agreed to maybe both go towards market here instead of splitting the attack forward from jet and the side with rays, this could have been an easy trade situation, potentially. This has been something that Wuhuch has been doing the entire time. So a quick little calm, just say, hey, Jet, do you like dashing this way and diving into this area? That would have been good. Or have Wuhujin go in this direction and have Jet follow up that way. That way there's a guaranteed trade and guaranteed space take. Just a thought. Oh, oh. Oh, what? Oh, no way. Oh, man. That's some crazy raise tech. Oh, my goodness. This is insane. Oh, it's the little bounce that gets me. So the first thing that I love about Illusion's play here is that he's layering the nade and then satcheling off it with the rocket. And the timing is perfect. By the time he lands, no damage from the nade. Like, perfectly executed, clearly practiced. Now, the cool thing about this rocket is it pushes him to the right. So he's actually wrapping around the building just right. He doesn't bounce into the wall and lands perfectly to take out this chamber. And now the poor unsuspecting Clove here has absolutely no chance. Insane take. And then obviously the follow up and finishing off the jet in this situation. Layering again another nade to force the jet to play in one position. And now you're able to easily path up and clean up the jet in the situation. What an entry. <laughs> so much better. And the timing on all of that was just beautiful to watch. Okay, big rush on A. We should be immediately communicating this. Small mistake. I don't think they're taking our water supply. Or, oh. oh, we are so dead here. Oh, wait, you don't no way. Oh my god. No, what are you doing? What are you doing, Breach? Swing him! He's fucking dead! Oh, what a throw. He should have... How'd he get two off that? That's insane. The one thing that goes to show, even though you should be 100% dead, stay calm, because you never know what's going to happen in this game. Insane they lived that. Alright, calling up the satchel play. Oh my god. Four, four. Uh, Breach was missing. Did Breach use any Zuto? Now, we have Boombot available again. I just, Could Boombot. Oh, all five, all five, all five. 
A boom bot. We don't know all five. That's definitely a lie. You just saw a leg. You just saw a leg. Yep. Boom bot. Boom bot. Boom bot. I'm holding Ailing. Come on, boom bot. Do it. Boom bot. Clear the close angle. Ailing dead. One enemy remaining. Oh my god, get it. Stuck elbow could be on site. Boom bot. Holding our back. Elbow. Boom bot directly in front of you. <laughs> Do we have a boom bot? <laughs> Can we boom bot? <laughs> you can my contacts over. What are we planning on saving this boom bot for? That's my question. I, I've seen this a few times from Hooge. When are we going to throw it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This may seem like a nitpick, but I've just noticed this a lot. So we're two away from our rocket here, which could be a factor. We got two. We could stage right in with that rocket. 11 bolts left. 11 bolts in the dream. Spike planted. Huge. One more. One more and we have a rocket to lo load in here. Last player standing. This is still winnable with the rocket. Okay, rocket is available. Huge kill. We can totally pop rocket now. Looks like he's not going to go for it just because of that res. A few more seconds and then Clove dies. That guarantees some value here. Too wide, too wide, too wide. One enemy remaining. Close dead. We could pop. Uh, maybe not. No. Drop in a smoke. Impressive wiring. Oh my god. It's gonna work. No way. Oh my god! No! I wonder if he popped rocket. I wonder if he popped rocket there. How that would have gone. I'm coming what the heck? If you pop rocket, I wonder if they hesitate. Don't blame I'm curious about that. It's possible. Bro, I really <laughs> probably was your fault, Jeff. <laughs> You've got that I'm fine just fighting them and dying mindset, you know? You want to play? Let's play. Gone, buddy, I'm You're alive. Hey, I'm Good boom bot here. For every take. Are yeah, it looks like it's going to be an A take for sure. So this is a good like rotation. Could be tiles here. Tiles clean. Nothing tiles. They're out. They're out. The I'm going to rock it out right now. Trying to help his teammate here on time. Perfect timing. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, we love it. <laughs> so knowing that the clove is in this position, he can rock it out and easily clear out this angle. Right? Going elbow, obviously. There was a little bit of a risk of A main, but I think it was taken care of in that situation. Three to four towards B. Be specific with numbers shot. Good boom bot here. And then peek with it. Nice. Good peek here. Good control on the peek. Take a look at this one again. So we go back here. Watch how he decides to peek. It doesn't go too, too wide. Stays on this one line and focuses on this area right here. So this pathing into the site, which is a very common one. So perfect spot. Great cross replacement. Decides to live after he gets the first kill, which is so important. Again, I, I talked about this several times, chat. When you get a kill, try to fall back. So this is really good patience from Wilujin. Pre-firing the angle he's probably gonna go by. He can dolly boom bot. Yes, love it. We have a boom bot out here. Not out, not out, not out. Here, I'm on HP. This is gonna chill, low HP here. Perfect. Excellent, great patience. Chippers out, right here, right here. Great patience here. Dead. Could catch a rotation here. We should be I really careful. Clove here, one missing. Reyna missing. Could look through. Reyna could be anywhere. Reyna could be tiles. I got timing tiles. I'm gonna cover midler. We're listening for a rotation here too, which is important. This is good information. I have midler. Eighty. Reyna still not revealed. I can't, I, I, I Reyna uh, could have I wrapped see. all the way through A and flanked, which is the scary part. Smoking B. You can yeah, even can still be, be on, on the right with tiles here. If you can't come mid, I got mid. It's actually terrifying. She's already oh, up there. Up Bring it. Oh my god. Terrifying. It was like it was like cue the jaws music here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has to plant. Can I that shit? Nice work. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I said they couldn't be mid. I was fucking wrong. Yeah, they could have been anywhere. They could have been in our spawn. Oh, 
So here's the problem with some ranked players. They move forward way oh, too shit. much. Boombot comes out, and then from here, the nade goes in. So the one thing that is working really well for Wahujin is the fact that Sova's ulting in this area. So if anyone's playing in this area here, they either have to eat the ult or they have to eat the nade. So that forces the person who's out of position playing the spot to move out and swing on this. And the great thing about this, we've talked about this in previous VODs, throw the Boombot out to draw cross replacement. Because if the Boombot comes out, a lot of times people cat protocol and they look at that spot. And it draws attention. And they have to deal with it. In this situation, he didn't deal with it. And now he had to fight both the Boombot and Wuhujin. We talked about how pressure can kill people, right? Really, really easy pressure can put people in a bad position to be able to take a fight. That because of that pressure, they end up getting or making really poor decisions and usually crouching into gunfights. So this was a really easy, clean fight for Wuhujin to take. Really well set up. Playing off of the util and off of the ult. You want to send it? I'll send it with you. Go get out of here! Get out of here! What? No! I knew you wanted it. I, I need you to know I one tapped Reyna while I was midair. <laughs> <laughs> that is criminal. See, here's the thing when that shit happens, just remember karma is a bitch. <laughs> It will come back to you. <laughs> Be very grateful. <laughs> okay, so playing passive on A site, I think they're probably going to end up going B here, but it all depends on if they want to challenge a cipher. The reason why we're playing passive right now is if we look at the top of our screen, we're reading that the breach alt is active here. So I would assume that when they attack, they're going to be going from elbow. Usually that's what they've been doing. And they'll send in a breach alt to clear this area. So Hooge is now playing in a position to start retaking right away and basically just completely playing passive and waiting for that breach alt to be gone. From here, he has a perfect staging ground if he holds this space to be able to retake into the site after they've dumped all their utility to try to clear out the site in the first initial push. So this is really good, really smart, well planned out. Breach has been taken out, so this round is pretty much over. I'd say this game is pretty much over as well. Moving off of the nade here. Didn't really need to do this, but it's okay. And that's going to be GG, I believe. One minute and 12 seconds, no need to do this. We can just clean it up. It looks like everyone's gonna be pushing, so might as well join them. Gonna head them off here. Perfect, ends the game. Defender GG. Free. So, what did we learn from this game? Well, Wuhujin is definitely getting better with his timing. So the Dopai training has been working really well. The timing with the nade, all that good stuff. He's clearly gone in and practiced these things. We've seen clear improvements to the aim as well. I believe he's one game off of Immortal 2. And in fact, as I know it, he does hit Immortal 2. So congratulations to him. Amazing work with that. Thank you again for giving me this one and this opportunity to work with you, Uhujin, and be able to look at your VODs and review them. And thank you to the viewers for joining me on this journey. Looking forward to watching another one and see you tomorrow.